Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, I wanna do a quick step into the brand new Philips Coral Care Gen 2. All right, I say I wanna do a quick step into this LED because I wanna do this review in two parts. I felt like when I started to work out what I should cover in this review that I really needed some input from you guys. So I figured I'd cover the surface level details in this video and then I'm gonna ask you to give me what things you want me to cover in the in-depth review in the comments section down below. Please don't hold back. I've got this fixture for another couple of weeks. I wanna put it through its torture test, but I wanna do that in a way that represents what you guys wanna know about it. So feel free to hit the comments down below. Anyway, enough on that. Let's jump into this surface level part one review of the Philips Coral Care Gen 2. And I feel like we should start off with a little bit of history. A fair while ago, Philips made an announcement that they were gonna enter the aquarium lighting industry. Now that's huge news because at that point in time, particularly with LEDs, we only really had involvement from small players in the market. And when I say small players in the market, I mean in the lighting market. Sure, they're big players in the aquarium industry, but they, the players in the aquarium industry pretty much buy components from the lighting manufacturers and piece together their own lights. Philips make their lights completely. That's, that's not a problem. They put these lights together, they build them to their specs and everything like that. So when Philips said they were gonna get into the aquarium lighting scene, it created quite a bit of buzz and they announced their Coral Care. At that point in time, it was Gen 1. Now, it was a big build up, but it had promised a lot of things. It was gonna be the light that replaced T5s, the LED that replicated T5s or metal halides, but with the advantages of LED. And there was a lot of hype um, and a lot of uh, secret squirrel whispers about it. And I say secret squirrel because it just never quite really came to market. It was released in Europe and they sold a few of them. I'm not sure how many in Europe. I don't believe it ever came to America, not officially anyway. And it definitely did not come to Australia. So it was a bit of the light that never happened. Now, fast forward a few years, Philips took on all of the feedback and all of the lessons they learned from their first go at aquarium lighting. And they've come up with the LED fixture Gen 2. Now this, they've called it the same thing. It's still the Philips Coral Care and it's still got the same sort of style and approach that the um, original Coral Care had with a few little updates to it. So I feel like we should start off with some of the specs just to get out of the blocks and running. Now, first of all, one of the benefits or I should list you that one of the features of this device is that it's a little bit Kessel-like in that you don't program individual colors, although Kessel have started to go that way now. You get to pick the intensity and how cool or warm you want that light to be. Now, Philips have done that so that you can't get it wrong. There's nothing worse, in my opinion, than if you get someone fairly new to the game, and um, or even not new to the game, someone fairly experienced, but they don't have access to a spectral meter, and they're dialing in how many, how what percentage of power they want the red lights to have, the green lights to have, the UVs, the UV2s, the, the cyans, the deep blues, every individual channel, and they've honestly got no idea. They're tuning to their eye, which is not exactly what the corals need. I applaud Kessel for going with their Kessel logic, where you basically just pick a color that you like the look of to your eye and Kessel logic will develop what spectrum it needs to give the corals what they need. Philips have done the same thing here. Of course, they haven't called it Kessel logic though, but they've made it so you just pick the intensity and then whether you like it warm or cool. And you can obviously vary between the strengths and the temperatures throughout the day, throughout the uh, program set points, but you don't have to. Now you could view this as a pro or a con, but you do not have to program individual channels of light. Now, speaking of power, this is a huge unit and it takes 170 watts of power, which is quite a lot when we're talking LEDs. Now, it sounds like a lot, but you've got to bear in mind, this is a gigantic unit. This is probably the equivalent of about four Kessel A360Xs or maybe two Radeons um, or equivalents like that. It's a massive unit. In fact, the size of it is, the fixture itself is 46 by 40 centimeters. I'll pick it up so you can see. It's a beast. This thing is massive. It's a gigantic light. You're not gonna put this over your um, over your nano or anything like that. It's, it's a big light. It's made for big tanks, made for commercial installations, things like that. Doesn't mean it doesn't have a place in the home aquarium, but it's not gonna go over your uh, 50 liter nano. It's really made for larger aquariums. All right, now one of the other features I wanna point out is there are no moving parts. There's no fans. This thing weighs a ton. It's seven kilos, which 
Might not sound like a lot, but compared to most LED fixtures you pick up, this thing needs you to bend your knees. And that's because there is no fan. All of the cooling is done passively through this giant heat sink. Now, that's a huge thing. Uh, one, it cuts down on noise and it cuts down on failure points so, so much. The number of LEDs I've seen that have died because the fans got filled up with gunk or they just get uh, humid salt water air in them, they fail, the unit overheats and it's dead, right? That's not gonna happen with this Philips light. This thing is designed to set and forget. You put it in its place, you give it a little wipe down, they say that it's IP65 rated, so you get a wet cloth, give it a wipe, it's good to go, that's all you have to do. All right, one other thing I should point out is there is no external power supply on this unit, so you don't need to find somewhere to mount this big brick of power supplies, it's all built into the unit, which, I guess has its pros and cons, but it does mean you don't have to find somewhere to mount that or you don't have to procurously balance that up in your lighting hood or anything like that. On the downside, it could mean that there's a bit of extra heat or if you needed to replace that part, you're gonna have to pull apart the light. But I'm hopeful that the fact that Philips had built it in there with that giant heat sink, that it's very, very reliable. And in fact, it's one of the key features they promote is the reliability of this unit. Okay, now in this giant fixture, there are 68 LEDs. Now they're broken down by 12 in the 470 newton meter range, 22 in the 450 range, four that are amber, four that are cyan, which is 490, six that are 415, and then 20 that are six and a half thousand Kelvin. I must admit, I'm not overly sure why we've got a mixture of um, color names, um, NM and Kelvin, but hey, that's the breakdown. If there's any LED gurus out there, they may know more about that than I do. All right, now what does that mean? You've got all these LEDs, all this power, a giant fixture, what it means is the coverage of this thing is gigantic. Phillips are quoting depths of up to one meter, right? That is massive, right? not many people are gonna run tanks up to a meter deep. But realistically, the coverage they're talking, if you're talking an SBS dominant tank where you're really just trying to grow sticks in that high power environment, we're talking a uh, coverage of 80 by 60 centimeters per light. Now that's massive. That's a huge space compared to how many um, AIs or radions or even T5s or metal halides you're gonna need to run to cover that space. This thing is a beast. Now, sure, if you wanted to stretch it out a bit further, you wanna run something like a mixed reef, this will still cover one meter by 80 centimeters. That's massive. So you can run a huge tank, one meters, three foot cube off this light alone. That's massive. I don't know many fixtures out there that will cover a three foot light on the, a three foot by three foot tank on their own. One other thing I should point out is that since the first unit, they copped a little bit of flack about not being uh, Wi-Fi. You had to bring out your computer and plug it in and all that stuff. They've now released the controller. Now this is the Gen 2 controller. It can control up to four of these lights. You've got room to plug four lights into. Uh, it's got a USB connection for power, but also for initially setting up your uh, Wi-Fi settings on the box for the first time around. And it also has a port for zero to 10 volt input. So if you want to use something like your Apex or something else to build your schedule or to control the light, you can. Uh, the controller itself is, um, it looks pretty uh, industrial, this big uh, waterproof fixture with the cable glands down here. It's a tiny little board in there, which basically just controls your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and memory. It obviously does a little bit of work too to send the signal to the uh, light itself, but um, the power is all handed through the other cable. All right, now once you've got that controller set up and you've got the light powered on, you can then jump on either your computer to control it. There's an app for either PC or Mac this time around. They copped a bit of flack for no Mac control last time around. And there is to be an application for your phone and I have seen it in other markets. So if I wanted to do a bit of a dodgy, I could use some uh, VPN stuff to replicate another part of um, the app store and download it. I'm not gonna do that yet because um, I've just got some feedback to the um, distributors in Australia to make sure that they get the app released in the Australian market and then I'll be able to download it on my phone. To be honest though, the uh, application was available for my Mac. I downloaded it, it was very, very simple. Um, like I said, you just pick the uh, intensity of the light and the uh, how warm or cool you want it. You set the number of points throughout the day you want it to move between, set your times and the schedule's built. Very, very simple. There are a couple of um, built-in uh, schedules that if you if you can't be bothered building a schedule, you can just pick one of those ones there. You can set the start and finish time and it'll do the rest. Very, very clever because um, I don't know about you, if you're gonna go for a fairly basic schedule, there's nothing worse than picking 12 points and then setting the time and the intensity of the temperature. You can end up spending an afternoon doing something which should be much easier to just pick one off the shelf and then tweak it to suit your needs. All right, guys, as I touched on, I wanted this first video just to be an introduction to the Philips Coral Care. 
I want to do a much more in-depth review on this light. Like I said, I've got it for a couple of weeks and I'm keen to set it up. I want to borrow a power meter, do some comparisons against metal halides, against some other LEDs and things like that, get some power readings, all that sort of jazz. See how corals respond to it is obviously a fairly important one and get some footage of what it looks like over a tank. But before doing that, I really wanted to ask you guys to see what you want covered in that video. I realize there's not many of these lights in the wild and I'm really honestly honored to have the opportunity to review one. So I wanna make the most of this review. Tell me what you wanna see, tell me what you want covered in that in-depth review and I'll do my best to get it done, guys. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel, that way you won't miss that future video. Don't be afraid to put your comments in the section down below. Let me know what you wanna see covered in that video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up because that really helps me out in this YouTube uh, venture. Till next time guys, uh, stay safe, keep reefing, and um, I really look forward to bringing you the in-depth review of this Coral Care Gen 2.